Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. In this video I'll show you how I grew eight different varieties of lettuce from seed to harvest using a hydroponic ebb and flow system. Truth be told you don't need such a sophisticated system to grow lettuce and I'll show you how you can grow lettuce easily without a complicated system. I plan to use this ebb and flow system for tomatoes and also use it while we're traveling. So in that case, this system is just what I need since it waters the plants automatically and gives them the nutrients they need. Sort of a set it and forget it for a bit while we go on our travels. That's what happened with this lettuce grow. During the growing part of this lettuce, we visited Sedona and Scottsdale, Arizona, and this system went ahead and gave the lettuce the water they needed. But if you're not traveling, then you don't need anything this fancy to grow lettuce. I started this grow with an eight pack of seeds. This is the Lettuce Lovers Collection and a great way to try different varieties of lettuces to see what you like best. This eight pack costs just under $10, so not a bad deal. So to start these off, I filled eight solo cups with coconut coir. But if you want to use rock wool, that works too, or plain soil. Any way you want to sprout these seeds is fine. I found the germination rate on these seeds was pretty high, so don't overseed your media. If you're using rock wool, make sure to saturate the cubes very well with water and then drop one or two seeds in each cube. I like to try to close up the hole on top a bit, but it really doesn't matter as long as the seeds stay wet, which they should as long as the rock wool stays wet. I keep the rock wool in a tray of water and the rock wool will wick up the water as needed, which ensures that the seeds stay hydrated. Depending on the temperature, these seeds should sprout in 7 to 15 days. The temperature is important. The lettuce seeds like temperatures of between 50 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit. That's between 10 and 22 degrees Celsius. And in the summer, the seeds won't sprout easily if the temperature is over 75 degrees. They like it on the cool side. So back to the media I'm using to grow my lettuce. This is coconut coir. Some people call it coco peat, and it comes in these easy to store dry bricks. They take up very little space compared with what bags of soil might take up. And all you do is add water and it will expand ready for you to use. Just like Rockwell, the coconut coir is inert. It does not have any nutrients in it for the plants. So you will have to use some type of hydroponic nutrient solution once your seeds germinate. I usually use the Grow Big from Fox Farms. For this grow, I use the AeroGarden nutrient solution. You can also try germinating your seeds on cotton balls or on clay pebbles. I've been able to do it both ways, but the germination rate with rock wool or coconut coir is much higher, so that's what I'm using here. So before I filled the solo cups with coconut coir, I made sure to label each cup with the variety I was planting, and then I dropped a couple of seeds in each cup since I wasn't sure what the germination rate would be. Here you can see the solo cups on the floor of my sunroom, and here are the containers they'll eventually get planted into. This sunroom gets a good amount of sun, but it's winter here in the Northeast United States, so the sun is setting around 4.30 and the days are short, so I eventually had to supplement this setup with an LED grow light. Now it's exactly one week since I planted these seeds and you can see little seedlings popping their heads out of the coconut coir. It's good I labeled these because as seedlings, they all look alike. There in the back is the Lola Rosso and this one is Paris Island Cos. And this one is Oak Leaf. And here we have Red Romaine. And Prize Head. And Ruby Red. Black Seeded Simpson. And this one is the Iceberg. So there you have all eight varieties as babies. And now it's 10 days after planting the seeds and you can see some of the seedlings have opened their first set of leaves and they've grown a bit in just three days. Now the seedlings are two weeks old and they seem to be getting a little leggy. So maybe the winter light in the sunroom isn't enough for them. So I added some LED strip lights above the seedlings to give them more light. 
We don't want the seedlings to stretch themselves tall and thin looking around for more light. They're better off staying short and stocky. This way their stems will grow stronger. Here you can see the reservoir for the ebb and flow system. I've been filling it up one gallon at a time using RO water from my water filter, so it's a slow process. I have a separate video on this ebb and flow system. This video is just about the lettuce grow. Here you can see I transplanted the seedlings into grow containers. These in the front are filled with coconut coir. The ones in the back are a mixture of coconut coir and perlite. I wanted to see if there would be a difference between the two. I didn't really find any difference, at least not for growing lettuce, so that was sort of a failed experiment. I also added a grow light here, but soon I'll put a better one right above the plants. This is probably too far away to do any good. And I wrote down what's planted where, so I know what's what. The left cube has my current favorite, Black Seeded Simpson. The middle cube has two iceberg lettuce in the back and two red romaine in the front. And then the cube on the right has Lola Rosso in the back left, Paris Island in the back right. And in the front left, I have the ruby red lettuce growing. As you can see, I haven't finished transplanting the seedlings from the solo cups. The rest of the seedlings were growing way too leggy, probably because I didn't give them light soon enough. So I started a new batch of seedlings. Here you can see I moved them inside and near a sunny window and gave them some extra light. So these are growing less leggy. Here you can see a small seedling I just planted here. That's a ruby red. These are both ruby red in the front, just planted at different times. Okay, now all the lettuce seedlings are planted. The ones in the front are mostly about two weeks older than the ones in the back. The front three container cubes just have cocoa peat in them, and the three cubes in the back have a 50-50 mixture of cocoa peat and perlite. I just wanted to see if I would find a difference between the two. The back left container has two oak leaf and one black seeded Simpson. The back middle container has three prize head and one red romaine. And the back right has two Paris Island Cos in the back and two Lola Rosso in the front. And I can't wait to try all these varieties. I hung a light above the plants to supplement the winter sun coming into the sunroom. It's on a timer, on for 16 hours a day and off for eight hours at night. Here are the seedlings. The front ones are about four weeks old at this point. The back ones are around two weeks. And you can see the difference two weeks makes at this stage of their growth. This is a Mars Hydro LED light, TS-1000. It's a powerful light, and I think it will supplement the natural light coming into the sunroom very nicely. I hooked these up to the so-called ceiling of the sunroom and the cables are adjustable so I can easily raise and lower the light as needed. You can see our property is surrounded by tall trees that filter out a lot of the light, especially in the winter when the sun is so low. Maybe in the summer with the sun high up in the sky, maybe then the sunroom will get more light. We moved here at the end of this past summer, so I haven't been here for the summer season yet. We shall see. I made the sunroom into a breakfast nook, so we share the space with the plants, which is a good thing. It's always good to have your plants close by so you can keep an eye on them. It's about 40 days since I planted the lettuce in the front containers, and around 25 days since the back containers were planted. And you can see they all seem to be doing nicely in spite of the winter weather outside. Here's a closer look. These are the black seeded Simpson. And here are the iceberg lettuce in the back row and two red romaine in front. And you can see the leaves are starting to turn red. And then here on the right is ruby red lettuce. The leaves feel softer than the red romaine. And in back of the ruby red is Lola Rosso. Now, these guys here in the back look a little wimpy. I might not be watering them enough. Remember, this is the cocoa peat and perlite mixture. Maybe that's why. These are Paris Island Cos and Lola Rosso, but they just look sad. These in the middle cube look fine. These are three prize heads and one red romaine. It looks different than the other container because it was planted two weeks later. 
so it still has some catching up to do. You can see how two weeks is a big chunk in the life of a lettuce plant. And then these back here are oak leaf and black seeded Simpson. Now it's around day 50 for the larger lettuce plants and some of these could be harvested for a snack, but I wanted to leave them for the sake of this video, otherwise I definitely would be snacking on the outer leaves. Another couple of days have gone by and I didn't realize that the light is really too close to the plants at this point. I should have raised the light up a little higher. Oh well. And now it's day 60 and I've got some really nice lettuce begging to be harvested. I really would, but I'm determined to film this video until the end. Let's see if I make it. Supermarket prices have gone up considerably, so growing food at home is really economical. And I know I didn't use any nasty pesticides on these, just good green leaves here and some red ones. This oak leaf is really nice looking. I am so tempted to cut off some leaves. And this is the iceberg. Notice the tips are burning. Is that from too many nutrients or is it from the light? I measured the level of nutrients in the water using a TDS meter and it registered at just under 800. And it's only these plants directly under the light that have tip burn, so maybe the light is too close. This is the red romaine. This is the Paris Island Koss, and you can see there's no leaf tip burn here, just gorgeous green leaves ready to eat. This is the Lola Rosso. It is absolutely beautiful. This is the Black Seeded Simpson, also doing nicely. This is the prize head lettuce. These three are also prize head, but they were planted two weeks later than the other one. So they are a little smaller, but still growing very nicely. In front here is the red romaine. You can see the difference in the color and texture of the leaves. And last we have over here the ruby red. Those are these two. You can see on the floor I have another batch of lettuce I started in red solo cups and they can't wait to get into the bigger containers so I'm really going to have to start harvesting the bigger heads of lettuce to make room for the next batch. By the way I did raise the LED light higher up but the damage had already been done to the leaves. Once they burn there's no undoing that. This is the oak leaf and I can't wait any longer to chop this up and put it into a salad. I think I'll mix in some red romaine and some Paris Island and some Lola Rosso. This is going to be one delicious salad. The idea is not to have so many leaves to harvest at once. I'll be giving away some of these greens to friends and family. There's no way we can eat all of this at once. The best thing to do is to harvest some of the leaves as needed and at the same time grow some more in cups to transplant when they're ready. So that way you have a continuous supply of leafy greens. These I grew all at once only for the sake of this video, but this is not the way to ensure a steady supply. This is the feast and famine method. So now I'm going to harvest all of these lettuce plants at once and then we have to wait for the next crop to grow. But the next crop I'm going to harvest leaves as I need them and of course continue to grow some more in red solo cups so that I'll have a steady supply of lettuce and not worry about supermarket prices. And it's especially gratifying to grow lettuce indoors while it's snowing outside. I hope you start growing your own lettuce either hydroponically or in soil containers. It doesn't matter. I prefer hydroponics but the important thing is to keep growing and to enjoy the process. Thanks for watching everyone and I hope to see you all again in the next video. Bye!